Hi, this is Miss Claywell here with skill 13. Um, factoring by grouping and solving for intercepts. So first thing we want to do is we want to put it in standard form. So that's highest to lowest exponent. Look for greatest common factor. Put the first two terms in the second two terms. And then we want to take out a greatest common factor from each set of those terms, then we should have the greatest common factor in the same. So it'll make a lot more sense once we actually do one. We're going to jump down and do example three first. So for step one is do these all have a greatest common factor? They do not. So I'm going to group the first two and the second two. Then, then I'm going to look, do these have anything in common? So these first have a 6x, so I can pull out, and that becomes an x minus y. Um, make that a 2y. Here these have a 5 in common, so I can factor out an x minus 2y again. So our big critical thing here is that we got matching pairs. So if I pulled out my matching pairs, I'm then left with what we're going to call our leftovers. So for example, if I told you this is 6x times a circle plus 5 times a circle, you would tell me I could pull out a circle from both of them, and I'd be left with a 6x plus 5. Okay, we just did example three. We're going to jump back up to number one. Um, so we already filled in this top part. We just haven't done the actual problem. So I'm going to look. My first thing I think about is can, do any of these have a greatest common factor? So you're looking at 12, negative 24, negative 8, and 16. Um, these all have a 4, so I'm going to factor out a 4. And then I'm going to group my first two terms. Then I'm going to group my second two terms. Pull out a greatest common factor from the first one. They both have a 3m squared, so I end up with a 1, or an m minus 2. The second one, I'm going to pull out a negative 2. Oh, sorry, this should be an M. M minus 2. So if we look at this, I got my matching. So I'm going to pull out my matching. And then when I do that, I have my leftovers. And I can't forget my 4 in the front. Okay, we're going to jump down to number two. So once again, you're thinking, do these have any greatest common factors? Um, these all have a two in common.
I'm going to group the first two. I need to make sure I have my matching after I factor out the greatest common factor. So I have my matching. And then here's my leftover. If we remember difference of squares, so a squared minus b squared equals a plus b a minus b. So for example, if we had, here we have, or if I had like an x squared minus 9, my a is x, my 9 is 3. So here's my a and my b. So this is a minus b, o. And these should be x's, that's my bed. So referring to this problem, this is the same as an x squared and a 1 squared. So this is really 2, 7x plus 8, x minus 1, x plus 1. We've already done number 3, so we're skipping to number 4. Um, I don't see anything these all have in common, so I'm just going to do... The first ones I can pull out a I can think of it I'm adding a negative here, so I like to think of it. So I'm going to pull out a 6 to the 3rd from the first one. Um, a negative 7n squared from the second one. And then once again, I want my leftovers. And I want to make sure I have my matching. So when I pull out my matching... then I'm just left with my leftovers. So this is what this could look like if there's two variables. Okay. So solving from factored form and find the intercept. So we're going to start graphing a little bit to make sure the equation is set equal, set equal to zero. Then we want to factor. Then we want to take each factor and set it equal to zero. Solve for x. Solutions are our x-intercepts, roots, zeros are all what we the words we use to describe these. So there should be, should be as many solutions as the highest power. So for example. 2x to the 4th minus 2x squared. There's 4 there, so we should have 4 solutions. The y-intercept is the constant at the end. And it may be 0. And then the last step we're going to consider is use a sled. We'll talk about what this is in a second. When you sketch. So up here, this is going to be where we write what sled is. Um, sled signs for sign of leading coefficient. So positive or negative and even.
So if it's if the odd or even, and this is how the end behavior will be. So we're just going to do some examples here. You don't have to write these, but like 3x squared. So this is positive because um, my sine of my leading coefficient is positive. And then it's an even degree, so it will end looking like this. So it's going to look something like that. Negative 3x to the seventh. This is negative and odd. So it's end behavior is going to be something like this, and we'll have to figure out what the inside looks like. Okay, we're going to do three examples like this. Um, we're going to use this equation. So step one is to get one side equal to zero. So I'm going to move my Then I'm going to factor. Um, they all have a 2 in common, so I can pull out a 2. These have an x squared. So there's my matching. Remember, this is our difference of squares. So I can write this as x squared minus 2 squared. And then my step 3 is set each factor equal to 0. So x plus 1 equals 0. x minus 2 equals 0. x plus 2 equals 0. x equals negative 1 x equals 2, x equals negative 2. So my intercepts and then my y-intercept, remember it's whatever is at the end. So my constant there is my negative 8, so it's 0, negative 8. So now I'm going to go ahead and plot these. 0, negative 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 1, negative 2, positive 2. Then I need to consider sled. It's positive and odd, so it's going to be down and then up. Um, so I know it's going to end going down, or start going down and going up, and then you just kind of connect the dots between. Um, you can also sketch this on Desmos if you need to. Okay, our second one. I'm going to factor out an x. Um, oh, so I'm going to realize I have a plus 0 here, so that's my y-intercept. We'll come back to that later. And I'm going to group them. If you can show it in less steps, that's fine. And I have my matching and my leftovers. Here's my leftovers.
here's my matching. So I have x equals 0, x equals negative 2. This one's a little harder to solve for. Then I'd want to take the square root So we cannot take the square roots of negative, which we'll talk more about later. So this is not real, like in a different lesson. So it won't show up on graph. But we still got four solutions, which makes sense because we're to the fourth power. So now I'm going to plot this. My x-intercepts are 0, 0, negative 2, 0. My y-intercept, I added a 0 at the end, so it's also 0, 0. And if we have sled, um, this is positive even, so it's going to be up, up again. So you can also sketch these on Desmos, but these are just basic sketches. Okay, last one, um, we can look at what all these have in common. I see I'm adding a zero at the end. So that's going to be my y-intercept, but these all have an x. If you can show this in less steps, that's fine. I'm going to pull that 4x. I'm going to plot a negative 1 so I can get them to match. So here's our matching. Oh, sorry, we usually do those in green. Here's our leftovers. Here's our matching. And then I made a mistake. I actually pulled out an x squared. So this is actually a difference of squares again. Because that's 2x minus 1. That can be 2x plus 1. I can set each of these equal to 0. So I get x equals 0, or not 0, 7. Here you get x equals 0. x equals 1 half. So my intercepts or zero, zero, one half, zero, negative one half, zero, seven, zero, my y-intercepts. I added a zero at the end, so it's also the zero, zero. Okay, and this is even and positive. So 
so this ends up and up I'm just gonna make these a little smaller negative a half, one and a half, so I'm going to go down, up, down, something like that. So these are just sketches you can always check on Desmos.